Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Zina Suisa, as you see here. And um, I'm asking you to come on a journey with me, and I hope you do. Um, I studied for many years as a mature student. And uh, with reservations, I was raising two kids. It was very difficult. And I didn't want to compromise their lives in order for me to pursue my dreams. However, my lesson here was um, I had to do that for myself because we have our lives as well. Um, I had tremendous expectations of myself, but as you'll realize, others had expectations of me. To start, start off the story, uh, my parents are survivors. My father was in the Warsaw ghetto. He managed to escape. My parents managed to escape. Uh, he met my mother in Austria in a displaced camp. They got married. They went into Italy, where I was born. I knew my childhood. That first, I forgot one thing. They uh, decided that this is how they told me, because they told me very little about my childhood and what they ha would happen to them. They decided to go to the land, so-called, of Plenty, Canada, and settle in Montreal. They thought that would be the biggest change for them and good for us. I remember my early childhood, ages five, ages six, looking into cupboards in my house. And I thought, how come we have so many cats? And how come we have so many rolls of toilet paper? Like, why do we have so many rolls of toilet paper? And why do we have so many suits? And what I started realizing as I got older, that my parents had a wartime mentality. And they put that fear into us. So we lived in constant fear. The fear of the what ifs, what if it happens again? I too had my own fear and vulnerability, um, which turned into courage and convictions. And I know the theme of this TED is pushing the envelope, and I believe that I pushed the envelope in the hope that I would help others as well. Um, my parents, my, at 17, uh, I, was, I was back to school because my mother had decided that when I was just turning 16 years old, that I would be leaving school. Uh, I was having some difficulty with math, and she decided and signed me up for secretarial college. I begged, I pleaded with her not to do this to me, because my goal, and I always want to do, is going to the helping profession. But she was resolute. I was going to business college, and I thought I did not have a choice. But even not even 16, I did have a choice. I wrote to the principal, and I begged him to speak to my parents, not to allow this to happen to me. He never answered the letter. So I went to secretarial college. But I had, I, I've learned to create intentions. And my intention was that I would be finished because I realized that they had these self-paced courses. I would finish the course quickly. And I did. I finished the courses in six months instead of nine. At 17, I was working. At 18, I met my husband who's sitting here right here. I met my husband. At 20, we got married and we have two sons. Um, was that enough for me? I, I don't know. I don't know because being married, I was very happy. I loved my sons tremendously, but I was not happy. I felt I was missing something. It took me years in discussion with my husband, going back and forth and back and forth. I wanted to go back to school, but I was afraid. I was afraid that I would fail. I would not be accepted. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fit in. I was double the age of most of the students. However, at 36, with two sons ages 8 and 12, I went back to school. I signed up for a course, a program at Concordia University called Family Life Education. And the director was very astute. I think she caught on to what I was feeling. And she talked to me often, and she said to me, you really are a good student. You should continue studying. And could you uh, create for us your experience as a mature student for the last two years, and we will publish it in our graduate, graduate book when you graduate, in our yearbook, sorry, when you graduate. For me, that was a tremendous, just that alone made me feel very accomplished. Um, I said, yes, I would do it. And she said to me, you really should continue school. But I had reservations because my fear always was, is what, what happened to me going to happen to my children? Am I compromising their lives because of my, my personal desire to succeed? At 36, I went back, I continued. 
I went into a bachelor's in psychology because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to help others. Uh, I went to Concordia University. It took a couple of years because I went part-time because I wanted to make sure, sure my kids were okay. And I graduated with a bachelor's in psychology. But I, I didn't think a bachelor's was enough to, to practice as a psychologist. So I decided to apply to McGill University, my alma mater, I'm here, and that's why this TEDx is so important to me. I decided to apply to uh, McGill University and to counsel psychology, but there goes the fear. The fear surfaced again because I had to do the graduate record examinations and I thought, I can't do this. People are telling me horror stories. I'm never gonna get through this. Again, this intention. An intention is value-based. The, uh, the idea that you can achieve I passed the GREs and I was accepted into the Masters in Counseling Psychology. Uh, that was great. Uh, I decided I would be a psychologist. Uh, this was amazing. Part of the program in the Masters in Counseling Psychology, without giving too much away, um, there was a supervision and I had to do an internship. The internship was in a SAGE Um I thought this was great. With supervision, I would be starting to be a counseling psychologist and it worked very well. Except towards the end, there was a supervisor that I spoke to, and she said to me, what is your future going forward? I said to her, I would love to train in cognitive behavioral therapy. She said to me, why would you even want to do that? You know, you're way too logical. You're too much of a thinker. And I said to her, but what is wrong with that? And she said, you were never going to make it as a psychologist. And that blew me away but I, I had enough success behind me and I didn't have those doubts. I thought to myself, just be careful what you say. And I turned to her and I said, what evidence do you have to make that claim? She walked away. Needless to say, I graduated with my master's in uh, counseling psychology and I did the program at Montreal General Hospital in cognitive behavioral head therapy. I became specialized in anxiety disorder, panic attacks, phobias, post-traumatic stress, uh, OCD. I also worked with depression and also worked with couples. I set up a practice. I became a member of the Order of Psychologists and I thought this was amazing. From the girl that's not even 16 years old to become a psychologist was truly amazing. I could not believe it. Well, it doesn't end there because once you have a feeling of success, you want that feeling again. I then told my husband, uh, what do you think? The kids are getting older. What do you think? I said, I'd like to do a doctorate. And he said, go for it. He's always been my angel, my support, always encouraging me and telling me I can do anything. I wanted another university because I thought from Corey McGill, I went to University of L'Oreal. And I met a thesis advisor who said, who was interested in the same area I was interested in because of the life I had gone through, because of the parenting I would had, not due to their fault because of what they have gone through, I decided to do a research in parental beliefs in relation to child rearing strategies. And she was enamored with the idea. She said, absolutely, if the university accepts you, I accept you. And I was accepted into, uh, into the doctorate at University of Montreal. Um, it was a long ride. It took seven years. It really took a long time because it's, it's rigorous and uh, it it's, was supposed to be 150 pages, I thought, turned into 280 pages, but it was so worthwhile because I was doing what I really felt that helped me. It was almost as a catharsis of everything I'd gone through. But I still had a yearning when I graduated with a handshake, shake my hand, with a handshake, it became Dr. Zina Suisa. And I still feel it, even when I do it, I still feel it. But I still had other things I wanted to do. And that SAGEP, the students, I still thought about. And I thought to myself, I want to teach. I had this yearning to teach, to help others, feed forward, help others. Um, I approached McGill University because I like the overlap of psychology and business. And I thought, there's no boundaries here. Why not? McGill University offered me a course in social psychology and then organizational behavior and then managing organizational teams. Um, I was teaching, and this was wonderful. I love teaching. I started to love teaching. I like being a therapist, but I love teaching. At McGill, I became an adjunct professor, a coordinator of courses, and then a distinguished teacher. 
And this was to me like, this is the girl that left school at not 16. Look what I've done. But I did it to give back because I wanted to always give back and teach others about the experience that I went through. I went through. I didn't want them to go through, although I can't, I can't save the world. But I thought, how about if I try to inspire people? Um, I was teaching. Uh, I was had a practice, and then I thought, I'm a psychologist. I'm going to apply to Dawson College, and that worked out very well. It took about two years, and I got a post in. I got a post in. Uh, in psychology. I was in that room back too. I was very excited. So all this to say, it's about fear. It's all fear-based. We're afraid. We're afraid that we will not be accepted. We're afraid we won't make it. But fear is an emotion. It's the oldest emotion. It's wired into our brain. And the problem is, in face of uncertainty, our, our brain overreacts. It overreacts to uncertainty with fear. And the only way, and what, what happens with people, they succumb to that fear. And they become, instead of changing their mindset, there's a whole world now about growth mindset, which I think I have done, what they do is they succumb to the fear, they fall into it. Instead of changing their mindset, your mindset is the lens through which you see the world. Okay, I'd like to show you two, two slides. Three slides, sorry. Courage and conviction. So that's the name of my, my talk. First of all, on the left side, fear comes true, that which one is afraid of. Viktor Frankl wrote one of my favorite authors, Man's Search for Meaning. He, he said, fear comes true, that which one is afraid of. On the right-hand side is convictions. You are what you believe yourself to be. Paolo Coelho, the alchemist, my other favorite author. And for me, courage inspires us to find our voice. Convictions allow us to find our heart. So what makes a courageous person? Three things. Courage, passion, risk-taking, vulnerability, because you feel, even right now, I feel vulnerable. Um, and that's stepping out of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to do that. Step out of your comfort zone. Secondly, have conviction. The conviction is the belief that you can succeed. Create an intention. Again, it's value-based that you can do it, and then create the goals to achieve that intention. The third one, channel that courage into commitment. You expect the best of yourself, you will have the best of yourself. Commit to objectives, move through obstacles with determination and perseverance. And what I'd like to offer you is one more thing. People are afraid because they think they will forget. So if you're studying, you're thinking, well, I can't do the next course. That's not true because your subconscious mind is your memory bank. So all of one's prior knowledge and experiences resides in our subconscious. The subconscious mind consists of stored knowledge and values and beliefs, but also required mental habits. Thus people can act, actions based on automatic mechanisms that include your knowledge, your motives, your values, your emotions, your habits without conscious thought. So if you take anything away, believe that it's there in your repertoire, in your subconscious mind. It's like riding a bike. You don't ride for a year, you still, still ride. It's like driving a car. It, it's the same thing exactly. I'm going to leave you with something. Um, I believe that courage and convictions were those stepping stones for me. But everybody can have courage and convictions. Fear needs to be empowered. You have to feel empowered even if you have fear. You have to feel optimistic. I know that life is not easy. And if we look around us and listen, and sometimes I don't even want to listen to the news, the world is very disruptive. We live in a VUCA world. Volatile, uncertain, complex, very ambiguous, a little bit like my life. However, you can make those changes. And when you hear a story, which I hope I convey to you. When you hear a story of inspiration, of somebody that's done something to inspire you, let that story be yours. Thank you.